Hey folks, Jonathan here. Ford engine. Uh, this is something that I, well, I didn't pick up. I called a friend of mine and he picked it up for me. This was uh, probably a little over 100 miles away from me and it popped up on Facebook Marketplace. And I had been looking for an old, uh, what I wanted was a V8 from the 50s. It didn't matter, well, or 50s or older, but it didn't matter what it was. Uh, I would have preferred it to be a uh, Cadillac motor or something like that, but this one jumped up and I went on and uh, I called him and he just happened to be not very far away from it uh, when I called him and he said well find out if the guy's there and if he's there I'll just run on over and get it and so he did and brought it to me and uh, I paid him and we're good to go the guy had it on there for $150 uh, didn't think I could get hurt on it because I've got a friend that actually has a Y block that has been totally rebuilt but everything is off of it uh, it's only a long block so I figured it'd be good parts for it if nothing else but what I want to try to do uh, it wasn't supposed to be stuck so what I actually done was told uh, my buddy that picked it up for me that the check in as long as it's not stuck we're good to go well I turned it over but it turns awfully hard so I'm hoping that just the starters engaged because when these starters engage, they usually don't come out, of course, until you, uh, until they fire up. So maybe that's why it was turning hard by hand. But uh, anyway, this is a 1954, which is the first year for Y block. Uh, everything before this was a flathead on the Ford V8s. Uh, we, you see, we got a three bolt Strongberg, so it's got the original old carburetor. And uh, let me see, it had the crossover pipe in the front, but somebody capped this end off and then ran the exhaust you know out the normal port and then what they would have done was run it out of here and run it down and around and that would have been how you put dual exhaust on a you know a, one of these that had a, a single single exhaust system with a single pipe now exhaust manifold is uh is cracked and welded but you know the plans that i had for this was i was actually going to use it in that 1928 dodge uh as just a traditional style hot rod and I was trying to keep everything back in the 50s, but I ended up selling the Dodge. Uh, I sold it after I bought this. And the reason I didn't mind selling it is because I, I knew that, you know, I've got plenty of stuff that comes in and out. And we can find a use for this or find a buddy that needs it for a rat rod and we'll work something out. But uh, I do know it's been over 20 years since it's been started. As you can probably tell by looking at it, it's pretty rough. And... Uh, it wasn't stuck and the guy decided he was you know updating the truck re restoring it and this came out of the truck and it was a 53 ford f1 so i see a tag on it down here that is a rebuild tag and i can see that the mains are 30. no yeah 30. so that's pretty rough that's that's about the limit so it's definitely been rebuilt and that tells me right there that the crank is uh not going to be good for turning it again so if the crank's bad it would need one and i can't see all of it up under it to tell what the bore and the uh and the rods are but let me see that's the thing about getting old you can't see a darn thing let me look and hold on just a minute okay so it's bored 30 the rods are 30 and the mains are 30 which is a long ways really to go with rods and mains uh, you know when you start turning them down that far uh, you go into because you know the 30 is undersized, not oversized. You got oversized bearings, but you got an undersized crankshaft. So, you know, you start getting into issues with you know making a, a weaker crank. But uh, I don't think it's that big of an issue on this engine. It's probably I would say the cranks are probably bigger than what they needed to be to start with. Uh, most old engines are that way. So uh, I don't think we have any plans to be turning it no 6,000 RPM. Still got the oil canister, oil breather blow by two or positive crankcase ventilation you can call it you know i don't think it was called that then uh got tape on it but it ain't covering anything but uh like i said you know the exhaust manifolds wouldn't matter anyway because we would probably build a set of headers for it if we put it in an old rat rod but what i want to do is i've got my old international down here and i'm going to open the hood and throw the jumper cables on this thing just to see if it'll roll over and then uh Hopefully it will uh, get the transmission back into neutral. Just a little three speed. There we go. So, a uh, little short one. 
pretty nice. I mean, it would be a a good usable one. I wish I had the uh, yoke for it, but we can find one of them when we needed one. Uh, that man, yeah, that manifold's busted here anyway. But like I said, it would be it would have a set of homemade headers on it either way. Or you could probably buy them for this thing. I mean, the Y blocks are pretty popular. But uh, anyway, we're going to uh, throw them cables on there and just see what happens. It looks like maybe. They maybe tried to start it or something. He told me that they did not start it. But of course, that other coal's hooked up. Maybe they tried to start it and could, couldn't get it started. And uh, let me see. You know, it's going to be a six volt system, but we're going to run 12, of course. It won't hurt the starter again. And this is an external resistor coil also. Uh, so they may have been trying to start it on six volts. You know, external resistor coil. Will run perfect on a six volt system without a resistor. So, but if you run it 12 volts, then you need to have a resistor on it. So, all right, let's throw some cables on and see what happens. All right, we'll give it a try. Let's hope nothing. I heard a little bit of a noise, but we may have lost our yeah, we lost our ground. All right, let me clip this on here. I heard it make a noise over here too. So my cables are getting old. I'm pretty ragged. All right, let's try again. Well, not looking good. You know what? This might be my fault. Okay, it's not sitting on anything metal, but it is sitting on this rubber sling tight on the flywheel. So I was looking here and on the on the uh, sling arm and it wasn't hitting it, but that's what it is. I think the fly was sitting in that rubber. So now we know why it's turning hard. So we need to get them, get hooked up to this thing and pick it up with the wrecker here, and we'll see see what happens then. Maybe it'll get a little better. All right. All right. You think she was holding up a little bit? Cut right into my sling. So now we have got it to where I know it's going to spin free. So. Let's see what it does with the starter. Well, I'm pretty sure it'll start blowing dust and dirt and stuff out of the exhaust, but I see no reason why we can't do a start on this engine. The pulleys are rusty. It's been a long time since it's been ran. Like I said, he said at least 20 years. So I'd say he probably cranked on it a while, new plug wires and stuff on it, and you know, was probably unable to get it started. But, uh, and that's usually what happens because people don't realize usually that your compression is low. Okay, folks, been a few days since I started the video. Uh, I just covered up. You can see all the pollen on there. The pollen is terrible. So I think what we're going to do is see if we can get this thing to start. Wish me luck, right? Let me see. Okay, we're just going to do the, the bare minimum on this thing to start it. Uh, let me see. Off the fuel pump. Uh, uh, carburetor's probably had it anyway, but all right, we're gonna need a positive cable and something to ground it. We've got bolts loose in the intake here, here, and here. I can see a chain across there, but I don't know why this one's loose. So we'll tighten them down first. Uh, get a battery. Get some cables. Uh, of course, check the points. Carburetor is not stuck, thankfully. Like I said, somebody has tried to start it. Now, they claim that they didn't get it started. So, one of two things. Either they did start it and it knocks like heck or something, uh, and it's no good, or they actually didn't get it started. So, you know, it is what it is. But, all right, let me go at this thing, and uh, let's see if we can get, these, get this cap off. Get a screwdriver. All 
Alright. Everything looks good, except for the fact that a lot of white powdery junk on them points. So, we're going to clean up the contacts really well. And we'll go from there. I'll go ahead and try to get everything hooked up and set up here. We'll get some gas in a bottle. Then we can fill up the uh, float ball. Alright, got the points cleaned up and we're getting ready to put them back in. We'll check and see if it's going to fire. Just got to run a one positive wire from there down to our battery on the positive side and we're ready to roll. Okay, we're set up and ready to start. Here's what I've got. Uh, engine is grounded to the battery cable. The battery cable one, we're just going to touch it on this nut right here on the starter. And we'll run the, this positive down to the positive cable on the battery for spark. And we should, we're ready to test it now. We put a reach, yeah, barely reach. Well, let me move this around a little bit. All right, we're hooked up. Let me see. Pause the cable. There's our coil. All right, she's firing good. Now you don't want to mess up and leave that hooked up too long because again, we're using a six volt coil. Try to remember to unhook it. All right, let's uh, put the cap on. Hopefully, they got the firing order right on this thing. I did notice it does rotate opposite of a Chevrolet. It rotates counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So, we're going to just pour some gas in the carburetor and just see what it does. All right. A little bit left in the ball. Let me get you set up on the uh, tripod here real quick. I'm sorry if the sun's bad. It's bright out here today. Kind of chilly but bright. Winter don't want to go away. Couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to check firing order first. Just make sure that they've got the uh, firing order right on the cap. That still won't tell me if they've got it pointing toward number one right. I hear it popping through the exhaust and the carburetor a little bit, so it may be off. Okay, cylinders are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, counterclockwise. Let's see where one is. So, one, five, four. This should be five, and it can't be because it's on the wrong side. Now let's see how they wired it. Well they got it running over here too, so that couldn't be. Let's see maybe if they use number one on the wrong side. Because it's definitely not wired right. One, let me see, this one's coming this way. Let's see if this goes to five. Or what would they think would be five. Third one back. next two four two four okay I think what they've done from what I can tell it looks like they used the Ford firing order uh, put number one up here where number one should have been over here used it as a Chevrolet as in two four six eight and one three five seven on the engine bank so 
they've evidently got messed up there so let me get it all straightened out here and we'll try it again okay so we're going to start by pulling number one spark plug out and rolling this thing up on top dead center Spark plugs are really black, flooded. It's probably pouring the gas to it while it was trying to start it. So, with the coil unhooked, we're just going to put our finger over the hole and then tap it. Now you're not feeling for the piston, you're feeling for the compression. I know y'all don't like my sparks. There. You can feel it and you can hear it. It'll blow past your finger and that's where you stop. Okay, so I've rolled this thing over and I can't find a mark on the on my balancer. There is a tab sticking out. So we're just going to go with what I've got. I've got it up where I think top dead center is. Uh, we're going to check and see where the rotor's pointing and then we're going to start out number one there and go counterclockwise like it's supposed to be and we will go to uh, each plug like it's supposed to be one two three four five six seven eight and instead of the two four six eight and the uh, one three five seven so i would say if they if they couldn't get it running that was the reason they just didn't have it in time Now it's actually pointing where they had number one, but they had number one up on the front left, which is where it would be on a Chevrolet. So what we're going to do is pull that one off. So we know that that is where number one's at. We'll probably loosen this distributor up too so we can turn it a little bit. So what we got is one. Might as well just pull these off. I know that's one, so we'll find our first spark plug wire on this side, which is the one I took off. So we know this is one. Got it on. So let's put our spark plug back in. I think a lot of the problem with the intake not having the marks on it of what cylinder's what, that may have been where they ran into the issue. So we know this is one. We'll get it hooked up. So we know counterclockwise. Well, it, and it's got one on the cap too. I just noticed that. So we need to go counterclockwise. And the firing order is one five. So five would be next. That's one, two, three, four would be the front one on this side. Counterclockwise. Don't mess up and go clockwise. That would that's easy to do. Alright, next is four. Should be the last one on this side. And we got eight, which would be last one on this side. I'm having to look at the firing order because I don't know it on this. I know a Chevrolet by heart. So the eight six. So six would be six second one back on this side. Okay. One, two, three, third one back on that side. Anybody can mess up. Especially me. I'm good at it. 72, 71 before the last over here, so that's the last one we got. Counterclockwise. 
Number two will be the second one back on this side and hook it up. Now, let's see what happens this time. Let's hope I got the camera on. I do. I talk to myself a lot when I forget to turn the camera on. Alright, get my wire back on there. Looks like they had it wired here with house wire too. So a little bend in it. So my wire will stay on it better. Or give her a try. I'm not getting any power to my I stuck my wire down in too far. Now let's try. Let me put some more gas in the bottle. We didn't loosen the distributor up either, but that's all right. So I'm assuming that they tried and they just couldn't get it running. And uh, you know, just don't. Uh, you just figure on all these old engines, old Buick stuff. You know, you got to check and make sure you got the. Uh, that's firing order right on them. And I left that hooked up like I told you I wasn't going to do. A little change in here. Sounded like it was flooded, but it may not have been. Spark plugs where they had tried to start it was the one was black, so we may have to give it a little gas and get them to blow out here.
nothing wrong with that engine very little smoke uh, no knocking I don't hear no lifters tapping I know the exhaust is loud but at idle you know if they was ticking that you'd be able to hear it or I would being this close to it so yeah I think it's a good engine uh, hundred and fifty dollar engine so can't beat that uh, a lot of people like to take good engines out to put you know update their stuff so there's plenty of old ones out there still around so this one 1954 we do have a 1953 mainline still that we may may set it in don't know we'll uh we'll do something with it or find somebody that needs it all right well appreciate everybody watching and uh till next time bye